Hello, this is Five Star Points and One Big Down on a Tim Scott presidential campaign. Like and subscribe, hate and comment. I did a similar series back in 2020 on the Democratic side for some of the major Democratic candidates. I will not be doing this for every Republican. And uh, there's a good reason for it, is that not all of them deserve to have a video. Now, as I uh, put this video together, it is May 23rd, 2023, and Tim Scott has announced as of yesterday, he's the fifth official candidate in the race. Uh, Ron DeSantis will probably announce either Wednesday or Thursday of this week. Mike Pence technically is not in the race uh, yet, but he will be. Then there's Nikki Haley, some ad executive, um, some guy named Donald Trump, and there's a couple other people who have no shot. Tim Scott, though, does have a shot. And the first reason why is because he has money. Now, money isn't everything. And the old adage, money isn't everything, it's the only thing. That actually, is not true in politics. You can have a lot of dumb money. It's about how you spend it, ultimately. Please clap, Jeb Bush. But having money gets you into the game. Now, it takes a lot of money and a lot of ground money to organize in Iowa and New Hampshire and South Carolina and some of those early Super Tuesday states. He will have enough money to get the ball rolling, and his goal is 10% in Iowa. 10% in Iowa gets him into the game for New Hampshire. In New Hampshire, he's got to come in second or a close third, and then he's got to win his home state of South Carolina to have a shot to be the nominee. He will have enough money. He has been a very good fundraiser, and that's important because you've got two candidates, one with natural money and one with Florida money, who is who are going to test the limits when it comes to the not retail pro politics web ads, web searches, TV ads, radio spots, um, cable spots. When you go to Facebook and you see a, hey, would you vote for blah, 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 blah. You know, do, do you know, the whole uh, uh, trying to get more information out of you so they can help market to you. That's going to be dominated by Trump and DeSantis. But Tim Scott probably has enough money to get his campaign going. He's going to have to be the retail king of Iowa and New Hampshire. A second thing going for him is natural charisma. The biggest down that Ron DeSantis has had in the last six months, and I did do a short video on Ron DeSantis, um, and I said his, his biggest down would be military um, because we just have had a problem picking military candidates. The reality is, is it has been his charisma at this point. Tim Scott does not have a charisma problem. People like him. I mean, he's a likable guy. Now, is he likable like Pete Buttigieg, where he's likable for almost no good reason, and people like him enough to get a, you know, an, enough going to help raise votes, or is he likable like Cory Booker, where, oh, you're cute, oh, we like you, and nobody will vote for him. We'll find out. But he's not unlikable. And that charisma does play off. The third thing is, he will be in the non-DeSantis lane. Now, Donald Trump is the 800-pound gorilla in the race. will probably be high 40s, low 50s, until we start to get to actual voting. Ron DeSantis is in the DeSantis lane which he's got between 15 to 25 percent depending on the poll and it is the trying to out Donald Trump Donald Trump with a more right-wing or right facing policy Tim Scott as a senator as somebody who has been insulated with six-year elections as somebody who did serve in Congress, 
before becoming a senator, has the ability to nuance to some of those Republican voters that want a different way between the Trump lane and the DeSantis lane. Now, is that lane big enough? And is that lane going to coordinate around Tim Scott? That is the question. But he definitely has the ability to take that lane. The fourth thing is, related to charisma, is that so far, he and Nikki Haley have a good relationship. Now, Nikki Haley is in the race. Nikki Haley will not be the nominee unless something crazy happens. But Nikki Haley is the speed bump, which is South Carolina. They're both from that state. Nikki Haley polls very well in her home state. Her likables are very high. Why this is important is because back in 2016, as much as everyone hates Donald Trump or says Donald Trump isn't very good at politics, Donald Trump was actually really, really good in that campaign. Because Donald Trump knew when to say the quiet part out loud. And in that race, behind the scenes, Jeb Bush and Marco Rubio, and more importantly their staffs, couldn't stand each other. Jeb Bush felt betrayed that Marco Rubio would even be in the race. Jeb was a mentor. Jeb helped propel him to electoral victory. Jeb helped organize some of his people to run against Charlie Crist when Charlie Crist was a Republican before becoming an independent, before becoming a Democrat, before becoming a Democratic loser. And so he felt betrayed. On Marco Rubio's side, to quote the uh, lyrical master of John Cena, your time is up, my time is now. You can't see me, my time is now. And Rubio felt like, get out of the way, old man. It's my time. And so when Jeb's campaign finally faltered because $100 million in the wrong hands becomes the Lincoln Project. When he got out, those of us who were supporting Jeb did not automatically go to Marco. And in fact, when I heard somebody say, oh, well, this is really great for Marco Rubio, I was like, who the heck do you think you are that I'm going to start voting for Marco? And that was a lot of Jeb Bush supporters. With Tim Scott, at least publicly, so far, and for a long time, it seems like him and Nikki Haley have a good relationship. Now, not good enough so that only one of them would run for president, but good enough that they both kind of know, hey, we're in the same boat. I don't think you're going to see them publicly attack each other. Now, staves are a different story. But I think as long as neither of them are near the 10%, but they both know that they don't want Jeb Bush, or Jeb Bush, they don't want Donald Trump, and they kind of don't want Ron DeSantis, they will have sort of a detente. The minute it turns out that they don't like each other publicly, or the public part be, the private part becomes out loud, which I know that Donald Trump will use against them, then that, that is over. But at the very least, the fact that he is in a good relationship with, with her is good. And the final thing that is a good thing is diversity. Now, Republicans can say all we want, that we don't see color, that we don't see... No, of course. This is a black man who his entire life has been not a Donald Trump-like. He's grandson of sharecroppers. He's from South Carolina. Being black and Republican is not exactly an easy thing because you get UT'd on one end, and on the other end, you get tokened. And he's had to deal politically with that his entire political life. And he's been able to thread that needle. So that when a Joe Biden will take an attack at him, and I think at some point Joe will, if he thinks that he's credible to win the nominee. Because ultimately Joe Biden wants Donald Trump. The press want Donald Trump. Because dollar-wise, it's better to go up against 
you know, Biden to go against Donald Trump, that's great advertising money. That's a lot of advertising bills. That's cheap programming, especially with SAG at strike. Pretty, or, um, excuse me, the Writers Guild of America at strike. SAG will be at strike pretty soon. Um, they need content. And running stories about Donald Trump is easy to sell content. But a diverse candidate will also help propel if they think he has a shot. And free media is good media. Donald Trump, I think for every 11 spots on TV you had him, all of the other candidates combined from February on in 2016 got one. So Donald Trump is, a, is the media magnet. If Tim Scott can get into that realm, it's good. Now, the one big down on Tim Scott is that Tim Scott is quote-unquote young. So that diversity is a double-edged sword. Tim Scott is older than Ron DeSantis. By a lot. He doesn't look it. That's a good thing and a bad thing. Republicans tend to want the next guy up. Ron DeSantis, at least at the end of last year, looked like the next guy up. Tim Scott might be the next guy up in 2028. Or he could be a potential VP candidate if a Ron DeSantis or... Um, Donald Trump wins and doesn't prick him too much that he could be a viable VP candidate. But if in Republican circles, Tim Scott cannot get momentum, his candidacy will falter. Ultimately, it is that 10% barge that he needs to get. He needs to get double digits because if he doesn't get double digits, it does not matter. There is no non-double digit lane. And I don't care how low the debate percentage is going to be. No Republican goes from 3% to viability. He needs to quickly get to 10 or his campaign is over. And that is the question. Is he thought of as being too young, too urban, which is urban South Carolina. Come on. Um, but is he too new? And even though he's been around longer than DeSantis and longer than Trump in politics, nationally, he may be too new. So like and subscribe, hate and comment. Those are my five stars and one big down on Tim Scott.